Hello, welcome to Virtual Newsmakers. I'm Debbie Ellickson. I'm here with my co-host Cynthia Seymour, and we're here with our special guest, Steve Sloan White. <clears throat> and Steve is a fellow author. We both have the same publisher, Self Counsel Press. Although he has many books, I I'm not sure who all the publishers are for his book, but his uh, he's got several books, and one of the reasons we wanted to bring Steve on the show was because of his copywriting background. Now you probably already glazed over when you think of copywriting, but copywriting is something we use every day. If you if you are writing a resume, copywriting is the words that go into your resume. Uh, copywriting is what you write on the back of a, a book to, to try and get people interested in it. Copywriting isn't just advertising it. We actually use it every day in our and everything, just about everything we do when we want to promote something or just even convince somebody of something. So your Steve's background is quite uh, in depth when it comes to this, and he and he also coaches other people and how to do this. So, but one of the things that really intrigues me is how he started in copywriting, or at least this is this is how he describes it is is when he he was young and and working <laughs> working working as a teen he wrote a sales letter for his dad's furniture company and that sales letter got them some business and there there starts the beginning of his career so <laughs> why don't you flush that out a little further Steve and, and tell us a little bit more about what uh, what you do what what is it about copywriting that uh, that you really really like that you made well, it a career? Well, I didn't realize as a teenager when I was writing that sales letter for my dad's business that uh, that was even a career in itself doing that stuff. I just did it to help my dad's business. He was a small business person. Um, he he had has been a small business person all his life. And I wanted to do something to help him. And I was 16. And I was working for him. So it was in my best interest to make sure the business was going well. So I thought of this idea of writing a sales letter and sending it out to, mailing it out to potential clients in the area. And he had no idea I was doing this. <laughs> and it brought in several inquiries. And over the course of maybe two or three weeks, he got two new clients. Uh, my dad was a furniture, uh, uh, antique furniture restorator, so he had a restoration business. He got uh, two new clients. So uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but that was really the beginning of my marketing copywriting career. And years later, um, I, I, I discovered this thing called copywriting and got really into it. But it's really just uh, an extension of what I did as, as a teenager. So you fell into it by accident, essentially. Fell into it by accident. Yeah, I just uh, realized early on how how powerful and how effective uh, the words are in in promoting your your business. Um, right. Let me give you a, a quick example. Uh, it's, actually, it's, it's actually a good definition of what copywriting is. Copywriting is simply uh, deciding what to say and okay. then saying it really effectively to get the result you want. For example. Um, Let's say you're a life coach and you're launching a life coaching business and you create a website. And on that website you have a page and there is a special offer on that page to book a free 30-minute coaching session. So what you want to do is you're going to be writing a page that describes your life coaching services and tries to motivate the reader to sign up for that 30-minute free session. So how you think about that page you know the the process you go through to decide what you're going to say, what you're going to focus on. Try to get that reader to pick up the phone or push that link or or send an email to book that 30-minute session. That's what copywriting is all about. So, do you start off by identifying who the target audience is first, or or is there some methodology for this? Well, the more you know about your target audience the better you will be at, at writing copy that persuades that target audience. For example, if you are writing, let's say you're a, you're a business coach and you say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe my business coaching services and it's for small business. 
Well, that's pretty general. It actually becomes pretty difficult to write. But if you learn more about your target audience, let's say your target audience is business consultants who provide training programs to large corporations. Well, now you know a lot more about your target audience, and it makes the copy not only easier to write because you can focus on those things about your coaching business that helps those types of business owners, but you know it's it's just so targeted it makes it more effective as well. So knowing a lot about your target audience is really rule number one in good copywriting. Okay, good. So really, it's who are you writing for first, mm -hmm. and then what what would you move it to something like okay, what are their needs? What are their problems? How do I solve their problems? You use a technique like that. Well. First thing you want to do is you want to know a lot about your target audience. The second thing you want to do is you want to decide what it is exactly you want your target audience to do. Like in that life coaching example I gave you, um, you know, you want to, you want them to sign up for that 30-minute free session. So what does your target audience need to know in order to make that decision? They're going to probably want to see some testimonials, some description of your coaching services, some of the benefits of what that coaching service is, is going to help them achieve, um, so maybe more uh, nuts and bolts, bolts details about your coaching services, maybe some idea of pricing, maybe, maybe not, but what is the prospect going to need to know in order to convince them, to motivate them to take, you know, take 30 minutes of their valuable time and, and have a free session with you. So that's really rule number two. What is it you want the prospect to do? And, and w once you know who, who your prospect is and what you want the prospect to do, uh, then, then you're, you're in that stage where you can decide what you need to say to accomplish that. Okay, so when, you d when you're deciding what you need to say to get, the, to get them to um, act on, uh, get motivated enough to act. Are you focusing on what you offer or their needs? I'm I'm curious. Well, a little bit of both. Uh, okay. What I often teach uh, business owners and copywriters to do is to make a uh, two lists. One's called a what list, and the other one's called a so what list. And you can do this by taking a piece of paper, <laughs> drawing a, a a line down the center, and make what list on the left side. So what list on the right side? Now okay. on the left side on your what list, you make a list of all the, the, the features of your of your product. Let's let's continue with that analogy of a coaching program. Let's say your coaching program is three months long. It's based on science-based uh, evidence-based systems. It's it's uh, it's it's designed for corporate executives. So you have you know all your what's on one side. And then on the right side, your so what list, you look at those features and you put yourself as much as you can in the shoes of the prospect mm -hmm. and, you, and you say, so what? So if it's, if it's a three-month program, the prospect is, is saying to, to himself, so what? What's the big deal about a three-month program? What's the benefit to me? So you have to answer that question. You can say, three months, that means it's meaty. That means there's time to really accomplish something significant in three months. That means it's a long enough time to accomplish something, but a short enough time so that it's accomplishing a short-term goal. So you can be thinking about all the so what's that the prospect is going to be asking and try to answer those questions. And then you can go down to the next one. It's focused on corporate executives. So what? Well, if I'm a corporate executive, then I want something tailored just to me because my problems are unique compared to other types of business people. Busy executive, I have a team to manage. So this coaching program perhaps is tailored to my specific needs. That's a good answer to the question, so what? So you see where I'm getting at. You write down all your what's and then put yourself in the shoes of the prospect, write down all your so what's. So when you have those two lists, you pretty much have your copy. All the content, the really good content is there. <laughs> That's a great, that's yeah. awesome. That's really awesome. So what kind of businesses do you like to work with the most? I work with uh, two types of businesses, but they're really overlapping. I work a lot with copywriters and freelance copywriters. I, I help, I teach, I teach copywriting to professional copywriters and marketers. Um, and also I teach business skills to freelance copywriters. But the biggest part of my business is working with small business owners. Um, okay. I have a lifelong passion for small business. My dad was a small business owner, um, you know, and still is. I, I just, um, 
I just have a passion for working with, with those people. So I spend a lot of my time working with small business owners on their marketing as a consultant, as a coach, and as a copywriter. It's interesting that you bring that up because I'm always harping on people about you. it's harder to outsource your voice effectively than to um, be your own, learn how to create the content to be your own voice. And a lot of small business owners, I think, have a hard time balancing, you know, time running that business and recognizing they, their voice matters. Um, do you teach them that it's important to use their voice or to to outsource their voice? I find that the best copywriting is copywriting written by the business owner. Now, the business owner may get um, some help from a professional like me. They may get someone that can review their copy and, and, and kind of rewrite it and polish it and make it better, which is one of the things I do for my clients. Uh, but business owners writing their own copy, they tend to always get the best results. I know a sales trainer, for example, mm -hmm. Uh, who for years had someone else write her copy for her website and for her blog and for her emails and sales letters. And she did okay, but when she switched to writing those materials herself, her business took off because suddenly people got to know her, her voice, what she's all about. They could hear her voice in the copy, and that built trust and credibility. So she, she does sometimes get, get a, gets a professional copywriter to kind of polish it up for her right. and, and kind of take it to the next level. But the, the, the draft that she writes is her own. What's great about that is you're teaching them how important it is to be authentic and, and put their hearts into, because no one's going to put their heart into their your business as much as you are as a yes. business owner. And I struggle with that so because... You get marketers that it when, when it's done by a marketer, it often sounds like marketing speak and not yeah. really yeah. like the business owner. So. That's right, and yes. and and prospects, customers, clients, they can see right through that. They totally. they know they know when it's a marketer speaking. Yeah. They know when it's the real person speaking. They can tell. You can't fool them. So why even but try? Steve, but Steve, there are businesses who who do use the marketing speak too, and and so. So can you give an example of copywriting, a good copywriting, say, a, a, a line, say, pick a sentence, as it compares to the, a bad line where people are just trying to sell you something? I mean, well, we I, know it when we see it. Well, I, I, I can give you a very good example of authentic copywriting by a larger company that probably got a marketer to do it. Marketers are capable of writing authentic copy. I don't want to get across that they're not. Um, there's a company, and I hope I got the name right, uh, lessaccounting.com. And they have this famous tagline, well, famous to me anyway, on their website that says, um, uh, accounting sucks. We make, it, we make it suck less. <laughs> That's it. We make it suck less, and and it's just beautiful. It's authentic. It's it's they target small business people who hate accounting. So um, I mean, it's just it's focused on on the needs of of the prospect. It's an authentic voice. That one line uh, is just wonderful. When you consider all the other marketing kind of taglines that they could <laughs> they could have come up with, yeah. but. Um, you know there are um, a big mistake people make when they write copy is they try to they try to pretend they're someone else, right? Or they try to write in this convoluted or hypey style that they see somewhere else. Um, it's always better when you're when you're authentic. Just so tell it yourself. as like it is. Be yourself. Tell it like it is. Yeah, it's funny because we had a, a hangout with. Aliza Sherman and Danielle Smith and they kept saying the same thing just be yourself mm -hmm. and I think that that is uh, largely driven in my opinion and maybe I'm wrong but I think it's a, driven by this um, advent of social media and people being people online all of a sudden that traditional marketing as we know it um, is having to uh, take the tie off and unbutton their shirt a little bit and yeah. get more personal and human <laughs> and what if, and also with with the social media aspect well even something that you see in Twitter or Facebook may look okay in an email in your email inbox so it may be very soft sell in your email inbox which you might engage in, and read a little further but right. when you see that same wording 
in your Facebook profile or in oh, Twitter, okay. you go <laughs> and delete. Right. Or, or Twitter <laughs> moving into Facebook. So do you deal with copywriting in relation to social media and how has that changed your business? Well, social media is very much more interactive, very much more authentic and uh, I think uh, Debbie made a good point is that um, the format does affect the copywriting. I mean, if you wrote a sales letter in print form, that, you know, the old-fashioned kind that you mail out, they still work, by the way. Um, <laughs> you send a, if you write a sales letter that's mailed out, you, you can actually get away with something that is um, very direct and, and very motivating and still good copywriting but if you took that sales letter and put it on on your uh, Facebook page it would come across as totally hypey and salesy and and it will you know will get a negative feedback but it would work well in the mail so right. sometimes you know you can be very aggressive in with some formats but you need to soft pedal it in other formats and in social media you need to be more personal engaging and interactive so right. it depends on the format the format can make a huge difference well and it's interesting even on the social media platforms you have to slightly change according to the culture because I always liken it to you can't speak you can speak Spanish in Spain and French in France and they're both in Europe but you really need when you cross over that border you need to speak French in France and you know Spanish you know you know what I mean you you can't be expecting your tweets to match over to Facebook or your fa um, your Facebook posts to match into G plus for example yeah, yeah you're absolutely so, right or LinkedIn too I find LinkedIn can be very uh, different than Twitter. yes absolutely <laughs> by, by all means <laughs> And and so it's interesting teaching people how to shift between the languages of the platform, the cultures of the platforms. Um, this is really fascinating. So if you were to to um, help people, because more and more people are starting to get into a need to work virtually, as the economy is changing, mm -hmm. how would you recommend people get started with this if they wanted to do it themselves? So if you want to be a freelance copywriter or set up a copywriting business, yes. Um, by the way, it can be—it's a very lucrative field if you do it right. Um, you know, it, it's—I uh, know a lot of freelance copywriters that make that work at home um, and make six-figure incomes. Wow. Um, you know, this is—it's not one of those phony business opportunity things. There are you know hundreds, thousands of freelance writers that are doing very, very well. Uh, in the area of, of copywriting, the way you begin is is to you know learn the craft of copywriting. There's many ways you can do that. You can buy a good book uh, on copywriting. You can take a, a good course on copywriting. You can get into a more coaching, mentoring program on copywriting. But you need to learn your craft. You need because yeah. that's the professional service that you're offering. <laughs> so you need you just can't fake it or right. wing it. You need to learn. <laughs> The craft hmm. of, you know, it's 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 equivalent to trying to be a social media consultant when you haven't actually learned social media strategies. Oh, I see it every day. Yeah, it happens every day. You know. <laughs> Don't want to even start. Yeah, pe pe people know yeah. how to post, so now they're a social media strategist. You know that's not true. Same thing with copywriting. Just because you know how to write doesn't mean you know how to write marketing copy effectively for clients. Exactly. You know, it's it's a higher level skill set. You need to learn it somehow, even if you go to the library and buy a good book on, uh, borrow a good book on copywriting and study it. So that's the first step. And let's talk about the. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna, I was just gonna ask you to, let's take a look at the different kinds of copywriting there are. We've got websites. We've got uh, some of the things you've talked about, but. But there's more than one thing. So when you're looking at copywriting, like for instance, I used to write for the Calgary Herald uh, special project section, and I would call that copywriting because I was doing advertising features for companies. So they would pay for for an article to be written about their company. So that's a form of copywriting. Um, so what are some other forms of copywriting? Because when people are just tuning in and they're not really quite sure what copywriting is. What are some other areas besides the ones we've talked to that really could constitute as copywriting? Well, you, you mentioned advertising in all its forms, from banner advertising on the internet to print advertising that you see in the newspaper. Uh, you know, someone writes that, 
and really thinks and writes about that strategically to get the best result. That's that's advertising copywriting, but there's many other types. Writing uh, you, writing a blog is a form of copywriting, a very different form, but it's a form of communicating to your target audience, mm -hmm. trying to get a result, and the result may be simply to build credibility and build awareness and build a connection, but, but that's what you're going for with a blog. Um, website is, is the most common form of, of copywriting. Copywriting tweets and posts for social media. Um, Print stuff is still copier, you know, brochures and and uh, one sheets that they have in, mm -hmm. in the speaker industry, things like that. But also uh, the spoken word can also be copywriting, writing uh, uh, teleselling scripts, writing scripts for online video presentations, mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Anytime you gotta sit down with a pad of paper and think about what you want to say, think about the the right way to say it, and then write it out somehow you know, uh, in a persuasive way, that's that's copywriting. And it's probably what I would consider the master skill of marketing, whether you're doing it for your own business or whether you are a copywriter and it is your business. No, it, it certainly is. Is there an average rule of thumb about what uh, uh, is, do copywriters work on retainer or do they work on an hourly basis or does it vary? What are your thoughts on that? It varies. Uh, most uh, freelance copywriters will charge by the project. So let's say you needed your website written or a series of emails written. Um, they would uh, quote um, the whole project from strategizing with you to, to des for des deciding what to say. By the way, good copywriters will spend a lot of time working out what it is that you should be saying before they write a word. Okay, mm -hmm. so that strategy part is very important. So it'll include that and include writing and, and revisions as well. And usually give you one project fee. Some copywriters charge by the hour, although I think all the good ones charge by the project. And there are some mm -hmm. copywriters that may charge a commission or something like that for certain types of projects where there's a measurable uh, response, Result. like a, yeah. yeah, like a direct mail letter or a, a Google ad with click-throughs and things like that. That's interesting. So do you have, have you created a network of people or a community of other copywriters? Uh, yeah, there's a community I have on, on my main website is stevesalongwhite.com. That's my consulting coaching site, but I have another website called copywritingtrainingcenter.com. Okay. And uh, that is my community of copywriters. I have a weekly easing where I where I, I, I communicate with them and we do other events and training and things like that. So. I, I'm going to throw this out, but um, I'd love for you to take it. I'd like to challenge you to take a deeper look into creating down the line a Google Plus community for copywriters because I have a feeling you might find a, it a, a really interesting and rich conversation or to see if there are other copywriting communities that are already on G. Plus. So, well, thanks um, for that advice. Um, at the I, end, I know there's a lot on LinkedIn. I, a, I, I, yeah. I, Participate a lot in the Google LinkedIn uh, sort of LinkedIn groups, and there's a lot of good copywriting communities there. But I haven't explored Google mm. Google Plus communities, so thanks. Google Plus is very rich in their community structure, so that you could develop out a community and then have a series of tabs that are related to it. And people tend to get once you get them active, they they start to you got to moderate it. But <laughs> it's, Great. Uh, Great. and it'd be interesting to get the global perspective on yeah. it as well. It's you'd be amazed. The social media um, professionals community on G Plus is beyond the scope of the wildest imagination. I I can't wow. even. <laughs> the the rest of the ones that I watch, they just don't. They're no longer stimulating to me anymore. Wow. Um, great. I'll check it out. Yeah, it's it's great minds. Anyway, as that being said, at the end of each show, we like to ask our guests to to share with our audience a challenge of the week. So if you were to challenge people this week to do something, what would it be? The challenge I would be uh, do is this. Take a look at the copy you already have on your website, in your emails, and anywhere where you're trying to pitch yourself or describe your service, look for a way of turning that into a story or an example mm -hmm. or some other way to make it visual. Because if you can turn it into a story or an example or a scenario, rather than just saying it as a fact, then it brings it to life. 
and people remember stories and it has much more of an impact. So that's my challenge. If you have a website or emails or any other marketing piece, look, th look through it and say, where can I use a story for an example? Nice. So be a storyteller instead be a of a storyteller. Scene. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yes. Be a storyteller. Great copywriters <laughs> are great storytellers. That's awesome. And you have the perfect example on your website. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, I start my bio with a story. Yeah. That's, that's really great. awesome. Well, all right, all right. So how can people touch base with you if they'd like to know more about what you're doing? Well, if you're a business owner and uh, you're interested in learning how to uh, get more ideal clients and set up your marketing so it does that, uh, steveslomwhite.com, uh, which you can see on the screen, I think, uh, yes. is the website to go. If you're a freelance copywriter or interested in the copywriting business, you can go to that site. But I have another site, like I mentioned, copywritingtrainingcenter.com. And they can, you can go there. And there's actually a couple of free workbooks that you can download from Copywriting Training Center that will get you started in, in the copywriting business. Nice. And you've got a YouTube channel as well, I understand. Yeah. YouTube.com forward slash Steve Sloan White. Awesome. And how well, many books do you have? Uh, nine books in total. Okay. Uh, three books in the area of copywriting and freelancing. Wow. Awesome. Great. Well, this has been awesome. So we're all going to start to become storytellers. I'm going to definitely <laughs> take a look at what I've got going on. and. Um, I've got some consulting projects coming up that I talk about voice a lot, the importance of voice. Um, if you all enjoyed our show, we'd love it if you wanted to comment, ask questions, or share any kind of ideas on our YouTube channel, which is Virtual Newsmakers. And we love subscriptions. Uh, so subscribe. Um, we like to connect with our community and get any kind of comments or ideas that you guys have. And you, maybe you maybe you know someone that might like to join us on a show. Um, we are booked through the beginning of next year, but we're already starting to book out for 2014. And uh, please join us on Virtual Newsmakers on Fridays at noon, Eastern Time, or on our YouTube channel. So until next week, Thank you, Steve, for joining us. Thanks a lot. Yes. My pleasure. Thank you. And we'll see you all again next week. Thank you. You bet. Bye-bye.